All right. Welcome everyone to Tuesday night. I think it's Tuesday. Day something or other. I have no idea. I think it's almost April though. Um, clearly the time to start wearing pink rompers during yoga class. Going a little stir crazy, so I thought I might have a little bit of fun here. Uh, my computer just started to screw up. So let me, there we go. All right. So you might want to strap for this practice. You can always use a towel or a belt or something else like that. Most people have something that mimics a strap somewhere around their house. We'll be using it towards the end of class though, so you won't need it for a little while. Blocks or block appropriate items from around the house are always a good idea too, but I won't be using them specifically, just in case you don't have any. So, let's get started. Coming into a comfortable seat. You can sit kneeling, you can sit cross-legged, it's really up to you. However you like to sit where you're easing through the hips a little, spine nice and long. Draw the shoulders back. Just close your eyes. Give yourself a few moments to tune inwards. You can start to lengthen your breath a little bit. And see if I can even out the view slightly. center, switch the grip of the hands, take a deep breath in, hold the breath in, twist your left. And then exhale, release to center, again switch the link of your hands. Draw the shoulders back, make sure the shoulders are dropping down from the neck the whole time. Take a huge inhale, hold the breath in, twist to the right, maybe add a really gentle pulse to the right. And then relax, switch the grip of the hands, take a deep breath in, hold the breath in, twist to the left. Again, maybe add that little pulse. And then relax the center. Roll the hands out a little bit. Let me on the wrists. And then switch onto your seat. Bring your feet out in front of you. Hands behind you. Fingers facing forward. Press the heels into the ground. Lift your hips up. Coming into reverse tabletop. Doesn't matter how high the hips get, as long as you're working down into the heels, lengthen the tailbone. Just think about spreading up across the collarbones and the upper chest. You can shift around a little bit if that feels okay with your body. And then set the hips down. Turn the hands the other way. Fingers away from you, you may bring the hands a little closer together, maybe pinky fingers slightly touch. Feet separated. Open the chest, bend your elbows a little. Walk your feet forward. Scoot the hips forward, tuck tail, belly in. Lift your chest, bend your elbows. If you have more room to go, walk the feet forward again. 
Bring the hips forward. It's hard here, but try to lift the chest. Try to bend your elbows. Feeling a nice stretch across the shoulders. Dip the knees a little to the left and look to the right. Keep your fingers nice and wide behind you. And continue to breathe as high into the upper chest as you can. Back through center, knees over to the right, look gently to your left. And breathing really high and full. Bring it back to center, walk the feet in, scoot the hips back, release those poor arms, shake them out. And come onto your hands and knees into your tabletop. Fingers spread nice and wide underneath your shoulders, hips right over the knees. Make sure your knees are separated, legs together, it doesn't quite allow the hips to move. And as you inhale, look forward. And as you exhale, round the spine, looking down. And just breathing back and forth through some rounds of cat cow. Like you can add a little side to side, some spiral movements. But then ready, when you're ready, walk your hands out a little bit, spread your fingers nice and wide, get that nice solid base across the tops of the or the middle of your palms. And press back into your downward facing dog. Give yourself a few breaths to pedal it out. one foot and then the other. Lengthen the sides of your waist. Get a little bit of wrap to the shoulders. Try not to let the elbows go out too far to the side. Trying to draw a little bit more in through the triceps into your serratus under the arms. And then slowly walk your feet forward to the hands. Once you get to the front, just a nice flat back, come out of your hips, soften your knees, hang down over the legs. Maybe sway a little side to side. If this bothers your back, you can bend your knees more or keep the hands lightly on the ground for some support. Slowly start to round your way up through to standing. Reach the arms up overhead last. And then hands to heart, feet together at the front of the mat. We'll do some smooth versions of sun. Some of you know them as sun C. Just stepping in and out of lunges, not really worrying about the deep stretch at the end ranges and the positions. Thinking more about the smooth transition and even flow with the breath. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Lengthen out. Send your right leg back, set the knee down. Inhale the arms up into your low lunge. And then set the hands down, step back to plank. Pull forward, lower halfway, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, nice long neck. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Right leg forward, set the left knee down. Lift your arms. And then set the hands down, step forward to the front and fold down. Inhale to stand, and hands to heart. Again, inhale, reach up, exhale, fold down. Flat back, send your left leg back, knee down, arms lift. Set the hands down, step back to plank, pull forward as you lower, chaturanga. Inhale, forward facing, exhale, downward facing. Left leg forward, set the right knee down, arms lift. And then set your hands down, step forward, flat back, and fold. Inhale to stand, and right back down, forward fold. 
Right leg back, knee down, arms lift. Hands down, step back from plank to chaturanga. Inhale, forward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot comes forward, left knee down, lift your arms up. And then hands down, step it forward, flat back to fold. Inhale to stand. And again, back down. Left leg back, knee down, arms lift. Hands down, step back and low. Inhale, open. Exhale, pull back, down and up. Left leg forward, right knee down, lift your arms. Hands down, step it forward, flat back into your fold. Inhale, stand. And again, right back down. Right leg back, low lunge. Deep breath in. Exhale to Chaturanga. Inhale, open up. Exhale, empty back. Right leg forward, low lunge. Arms rise. Hands down, step forward. Fold down. Inhale, up. Last one, right back down. Left leg goes back. Lift your arms up. Set the hands down, step back and lower. Inhale, open up. Exhale, bring it back. Left leg forward, right knee down with your arms. Set the hands down, step forward and fold. Inhale to stand and hands to heart. Now bend your knees, sit back into your chair pose, lift your arms up and fold forward over your legs. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step or float back right to your low push up. Inhale, open. Exhale, empty back, downward dog. From here, step your right foot forward and come up into your warrior one. As you lift your arms, you can always keep the back heel up in a high lunge if that works better for you. Otherwise, ground the leg fully. Turn the chest forward and lift your arms up. Spread the toes on the front foot. That can help you engage the leg as you shift a little forward. Then interlace your hands behind your back. Roll your chest open and start to bow forward for Humble Warrior. Don't let the hips go off to the right just to get your head lower. Keep your hips in line. Make it a little bit more about the stretch for the arms. Stay connected to your back foot. Inhale back up, Warrior One. Exhale, the hands down, step back and lower. Inhale to open. Exhale back, downward dog. Left leg comes forward for warrior one, engage that back leg. Either heel up or fully down, arms rise. Find your warrior, get that front knee tracking straight forward. Interlace behind, roll your chest, and bow forward. Inhale back up to your warrior one. Take a vinyasa, hands down, step back, lower halfway. Inhale, open. Exhale, empty back. Give yourself a couple breaths in your downward facing dog, or maybe take a child's pose, or take a drink if you're talking this whole time through. I promise if we get through this and you all come back to the studio, I will dress like this in every single class for at least a few months. From wherever you are, back to downward dog, soften the knees, and hop or step to the front, flat back, and fold. Bend your knees, reach up into chair, and stand up hands to heart. Again, bend your knees, sit back, inhale, exhale as you dive. Flat back. Step or float your way back through vinyasa. Follow your breath. From downward dog again, right leg forward, come up into your warrior one. But this time, instead of humble warrior, stay nice and low into the legs, but work that belly back, and wrap your left elbow over the right for your eagle arms. Otherwise, just grab opposite shoulders, but lift the elbows. 
Get some space. Try not to hike the shoulders up, but lift the elbows up. Some space between the chest and the upper arms. Imagine you're pushing something away from you through the elbows. Round back into the mat. And then release. Set your hands down. And move through your vinyasa. Left leg forward, warrior one. Arms lift. Settle into your lunge. Wrap the right arm over the left. Either twine or just grab opposite shoulders. Again, unlock the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. Send the elbows forward. And breathe into your upper back. Release, warrior one, and vinyasa. Again, a couple breaths in your downward dog. Maybe child's pose. If you're in downward dog, stay nice and strong through the shoulders, spread across the hands. Otherwise, just take a full rest. Next breath, soften, and hopper step to the front, flat back, and fold. Bend your knees, come up through your chair pose, lift your arms, and stand up hands to heart. One more time through, sit back into your chair, take a deep breath, and exhale to fold. Flat back, and vinyasa. Chaturanga to upward dog, and back to downward dog. This time, step your right foot between the thumbs to center for warrior two. It's open up to the left, engage the feet, if you have trouble with that knee kind of wobbling in and out, you can always activate your toes. That can help you ground a little bit through the foot. Arms spread nice and wide, fingers spread, shoulders down. Not too much curve to the lower back, so maybe a little tuck to tailbone. Then in reverse, bring your left hand back, reach your right arm up. Now stay reverse, keep your head back. But reach your right arm forward over that front knee. Maybe even bring the fingertips down. Keep the head heavy back to the left. Maybe even turn the chin down. Just going for a nice gentle stretch in the right side of your neck. Relax your jaw, maybe even open the mouth. Step back to plank, but don't lower down. From plank, heels to the left, reach your right arm up, side plank. Now we're going to pulse the hips just up for five, four, three, two, one. Up and over, draw forward to lower, chaturanga. Inhale, forward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Left foot comes forward between the thumbs. As you lift up, open to your warrior two. Again, just engage that front leg, reach out through the arms, soften the shoulders, engage your feet, deepen the breath. Try not to lean forward, keep your spine nice and vertical and neutral. Then reverse it, support yourself with your right arm, reach your left arm up. Just take a little bit of a side bend up and out of that left hip, but then stay reverse, keep your head heavy. Bring that left arm forward, maybe a little bit down towards the knee, and just stretch out this left side of your neck. You can turn the head if you're not quite feeling it. And then bring it back up to your warrior. Plant your hands, step back to plank, don't lower down. Heels to the right. Reach your left arm up, get nice and stacked over that right wrist, engaging your bottom side to pulse the hips just up. Five, four, three, two, one. Up and over, draw forward, lower halfway. Inhale, forward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Again, give yourself a few breaths here. 
keep the shoulders nice and firm or just rest fully down in your child's pose. Wherever you are, take one more breath. Soften the knees, hop or step forward, flat back, and fold it down. Back up to your chair, reach the arms, and stand up hands to heart. Give it a little shake, maybe take a drink of water. And from the front of the mat again. Oops, hang on one second. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty here with my own monitor. There we go. All right, perfect. So from the front of the mat, we're going to be stepping back a little bit. So shift your weight onto your right foot, lift your left foot up, bend the standing knee, reach your left foot back, keeping your weight on your front foot until those toes touch down behind you. Then shift your weight back into your high lunge. Engage that back leg, don't lean forward. Dip the back knee almost to the mat. And then lean forward now and bring that left knee all the way up, touch it to your elbows in front of you. And then shift, send the left foot back behind you. Once the toes touch, then shift your weight back. Bend the back knee almost to the mat, scissor your legs towards each other, engage inwards and then lift up, draw that left knee up, touch your elbows in front of you. Again, shift, send that left leg back once it touches, shift back, bend the knee, scissor in. Lean forward, bring that left knee up, touch the elbows with the knee. One more time, shift it back, dip that back knee, get that nice neutral lower back, tuck the tailbone a little bit, and this time, just cross into a twist. Bring your left elbow to the front thigh. Keep your back knee bent so that you're not locking out that leg. Work the left elbow and the knee into each other. Engage into your twist. Give it a couple deep breaths, shoulders down from the neck. to the floor, step your back foot a little closer, straighten both legs, lengthen out the spine, and then wave maybe with blocks underneath your hands, just start to fold down over that front leg. Or bring your hands up on support so that you can keep the spine a lot longer. Maybe if you don't have blocks, you can use books or water bottles. Honestly, if you don't have blocks, we're going to be like this for a while, so maybe order some blocks online and wash them well in soapy water. Come up halfway, bring your left hand in. As you open up, bring your right hand to the hip, encourage it back, and start to reach your right arm up into the air. Try not to let your hips slide off to the side, keep your right hip in line behind the heel. Maybe your hand stays in your hip or your low back. Maybe again, activate the toes a bit so you can stay nice and grounded. Don't lose the back leg, even if you need to bend the back knee a bit. Bring the hand down, step forward, flat back, fold down. Ground your way up, just easy and gentle. Reach up, lengthen, and hands to heart. Now for the second side. We're gonna shift our weight onto the left foot, lift the right foot up, bend your standing knee. Start to reach the right toes back. Once they touch down, shift your weight back, bend the back knee, lengthen the tailbone, scissor your legs. Lean forward, bring that back knee up, tap your elbows with the knee in front of you, then carefully shift it back, Nice and steady, dip the knee almost to the mat, pull your legs towards each other, get that abduction, squeezing inwards a little bit. Then lean forward, bring the knee up, tap your elbows with it. And again, reach it back, dip the knee down, 
scissor inwards, lean forward, bring that knee up, touch your elbows with the knee, last time reach it back, dip the knee down, and then just lift the knee into your lunge, cross your right elbow over the left thigh, and open up, bringing the chest up in line with the thumbs. I like to make a fist with my bottom hand, I feel it's nicer on the wrist. Just make sure that you're not doing a weird thing to the wrist if you do that. Press the elbows down to lift the heart. Keep the back knee a little bent. Then release your hands to the ground. Step your back foot close enough to straighten both legs, working towards pyramid. You may need to widen a little side to side to give your hips some room. Maybe pull that left hip back a little bit, hollow the front of your left hip, keep your back heel grounded into the floor, then fold down over that front leg. A little. Left hand to the hip, right hand closer in or higher on the support. And start to twist. And try not to let your hips swivel off. Keep the hip in line, even if you need to bend the back knee. Lengthen out. Maybe reach up, but this piece is really not super necessary. It's just the last piece. You want to keep your hand at your low back. Encourage the length. After all, that's mostly why we twist, to get nice length along the spine. Bring your hands down, step forward, and soften down over the legs. Inhale, round your way up, and hands to heart. Now step out into a nice wide straddle, probably facing the screen. Whichever side of the room that's on for you. If it's in front of you, just hop the feet out wide. You're at home. You don't have to worry about hitting your neighbors. But if you need to move the screen, I'll give you a moment to kind of adjust. Because we're going to be here for a few poses. Once you're in your straddle, turn your toes out and your heels in. Engage your legs a little. Bring your hands to the heart. Lift your left toes and bend into your right knee. Stay upright with the chest. Press back up, switch feet. Lift your right toes, bend over to the left. Stay upright, come back up, switch feet, and dip. And back up, switch your feet, and dip down. Again, lift, switch, dip to the right, lift, Switch, dip to the left. Come back up. This time, lift your right heel up and dip over to that side. Draw back up through center, switch heels, and dip over to your left. Back up, switch heels, dip over to the right. Back up, switch heels, dip over to the left. Once more each side, come back up, dip over to your right, heel up, and then lift back up, switch, and dip to the left. Bring it back up, keep your toes and your heels down. This time as you dip to the right, you can bow forward with the upper body as you reach the arms out. If you need your hands down or stay on your thigh, you can. But we're going to switch sides by keeping the hips as low as possible. So switch. And switch back to the right. Switch over to the left. And switch over to the right. Control the movement and back off to the left. And then to the right. And again to the left. And to the right. Come back up to center. Feet a little closer in, toes in, heels out. Get the outer edge of your feet parallel. Just a simple fold for prasarita. Lift your heart, hinging at your hips. Let yourself fold down between your legs. 
relax the head. You can walk your hands back in line with your shoulders. You can grab a hold of your ankles or big toes, whatever works better for you here. Another deep breath, relax the head, you're not on the head, no head stands here, please, forever. And then lift back up, hands to the heart, and step the feet to the front of the mat, or just the feet together, shake it out. A couple standing single-legged balances, maybe an arm balance thrown in there. Shift your weight to your right foot, cross the left ankle over, figure four. Start to squat back into your standing leg and shift back into your hips. Maybe you come down low, maybe you can cross the shin with the upper body. Keep your hips nice and low. Maybe the hands come to the standing thigh or the floor or your blocks, or you're up as high as your knee needs you to stay. Just keep shifting your weight back. Now, of course, if you're low and the foot is hooked around the shoulder and the knee is hooked around the other upper arm, you can come into Galavasana, lean forward, plant your hands, nice and firm, fingertips on the floor, lean forward, maybe the bottom foot lifts, it does not have to extend back, but maybe it does. You can keep it tucked in, keep that lift of the leg over the arm. And then plant the foot, carefully stand back up, release, and shake it out. Second side. Shift your weight to the left, cross right ankle over, and again, start to sit back into your hips. Deep, full breath. Again, if your leg is high up on the upper arms, you can bend your elbows. Maybe that Galavasana is available. Keep your elbows over your wrists, squeeze the elbows in, hug that foot around the arm, maybe extend the leg again, that's not necessary. You don't have to extend. Set the foot down, carefully come back up, shake it out. And step to the front of your mat. We're just making our way onto the back, so simple vinyasa, reach up, dive down, flat back, and step or float your way back through your vinyasa. All the way to downward dog. You can jump through to seated, you can bring your knees to the ground, cross your ankles, sit back, scoop forward, and come all the way onto your back. And when you wipe with the knees a little bit side to side, feet on the floor, sort of acclimate to being on the back now. Then we're gonna lift the knees up in line with the hips, lift the feet up in line with the knees, curl head, chest and shoulders up, interlace your hands behind the head, draw the elbows together, stay off your shoulders. As you get stronger, stay off your shoulder blades the whole time, pull the belly down, take a deep breath, as you exhale, extend your right leg, lift the center of your chest towards the left knee. Not the elbow, don't lean on your left shoulder. Lift the chest up. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, extend left leg, lift chest to right knee. Inhale, center. Extend right leg, lift up to the left. And back to center, inhale. Exhale, up to the right, extend your left leg. Again, come back to the middle. Right leg out, chest to the left knee, and back to center. Left leg out, chest up to the right knee. Once more each side, come back to the middle. Extend your right leg, lift up to the left, and come back to center. Extend your left leg, lift up to the right. Come back to center, stay up, straighten your legs to the ceiling. Take a deep breath, stay off your shoulders. As you exhale, lift the hips a little bit, reach the toes to the ceiling, lift your elbows up. Inhale, just the hips down. 
Exhale, lift the toes to the ceiling, lift the tailbone up off the floor, get the sacrum off the floor. Hips down, inhale. Exhale, lift up, tense up. It's not a pop, it's a hold. And down, inhale. And exhale, lift it up. Now reach your hands to the toes and try to tickle your own toes, keep the legs straight. And release. Winter wipe your knees a little bit side to side. Then we're gonna end up down on the belly. So if it's okay with your back to hug in and rock back and forth up through seated to plant your hands and step back, you can do so. If your back doesn't like that, just go off to the side and we'll meet up on the belly. Bring the knees down, lower all the way. We're gonna be here for a couple lifts, so you might need to shift yourself forward to be comfortable in front of your hips. And just lift yourself up onto your elbows for sphinx. Point the toes to the back wall, get the feet, tops of the feet on the floor. Use your arms, pull back as if you're trying to slide your body forward. Press into the feet. If those of you that have the strength without bothering your back, keep your elbows bent if you're lifting the elbows. Keep pulling the hands back to lift your heart. Don't push to shove yourself up. That goes right into the low back. Pull yourself forward. Lengthen your tailbone. Squeeze the elbows in. Engage those serratus muscles as you pull. Stretch the belly and the abs. Pull forward as you lower all the way down. You can rest your forehead on your hands or turn your head to the side, shake the hips out a little bit. Now we're gonna do my little version of bow pose. We'll do it twice. So bending one knee. Let me start that again. We'll do it twice. Those of you that can grab your inner ankles with both hands, We'll do bow two times in a row with the rest in between. Those of us that are going to do one hand at a time, we'll do half, one arm, one leg, for the first version, rest in between, and then do the second side. So if you can, the trick to grabbing your inner ankles is your shoulder needs to be open. So it's a hitchhiker thumb from the front. Keep the thumb up as you reach back, grab your inner ankle. See how the front of my shoulder is opening? You don't want it going the other way. That collapses the shoulder inwards. You want it opening up. If you can do this with both hands, do it with both hands. Otherwise, just support yourself on your right elbow. Reach your left hand back. Press the foot into the hand. Remember to support yourself with the right elbow. Pull the right elbow in. Lift the heart up. Just a gentle back bend here. Nothing too crazy. If you have both feet, you can start to lift the knees up. And then you'll either do that again, grabbing a hold of the inside of the ankles. Those of you with deeper back bend, deeper doesn't mean better, it just means that's your natural range. You can grab the inner ankles and walk your hands down a little further down the inner shin. That'll lift the knees higher and give you a deeper back bend. But again, it is deeper, so be careful with your back. Otherwise, we'll do the second side, support yourself on your left arm, reach your right hand back. Again, thumb up the whole way as you reach back, grab the inner ankle with the palm, Press the foot back, pull forward through the arm. You can use that foot that's still on the ground to help support you, keep that left hip down. And then gently let it go, shake it out. Give yourself a little bit of a rest. Then bring your hands by your ribs and press up into your tabletop. Again, like we did at the beginning, a few rounds of cat-cow. Really try to open your lower back up again. Pull the belly in as you tuck your tailbone. And then we're going to 
to set up for a few versions of dolphin, possibly a formidable pose, but we'll all start together. Coming down onto your forearms, bring your elbows to the mat, make sure they're under the shoulders, hands separated as wide as the elbows if you can, so your elbows are coming in, your hands are out. Spread your fingers nice and wide, push down into the forearms, keep your shoulders away from the ears, so engage again, serratus on the side. It's like the sides of your rib cage are pressing down towards the floor as well. Then tuck your toes and press back into your dolphin. Stay off your head, keep lengthening the hips up just like you would in downward dog, but keep the fingertips, the wrists, and the elbows all down on the floor and reach up through the hips and tailbone. Give yourself a few breaths. Stay nice and strong with the arms. And then bring the knees down, press back to child's pose. Take a couple breaths in child's pose. I just and breathe in your child's pose while I again fix my computer, which is giving me all sorts of problems today. Give it a couple breaths. There we go. And then again, set up for dolphin version two. So come on to your tabletop, lower down onto your elbows. You can set the distance by grabbing your biceps. For some, that's a little too narrow though, so keep your broader in the shoulders. So make sure your elbows are under your shoulders, hands are wide. Tuck your toes, press back to your dolphin, lift up your right leg, and still try to press back. Try to even your weight across those shoulders. Again, I'm not on my head. And then switch legs. Right leg comes down, left leg lifts up. Reach out through the leg. I don't care if the hips opens a little bit. Just try not to let both hips fall off to the side. Keep your right hip in line with the whole right leg even across your shoulders. And then bring it down. Again, rest back in child's pose, just a couple breaths. Maybe roll the head a little side to side to release your neck. And then for the next one, we've got a couple options. You can do dolphin, lifting one leg while well, you can take either version. Dolphin with both feet on the ground, dolphin one leg, and then the other for a few breaths. If you're at home and you're comfortable doing a balance, now I'm just gonna caution you. I've seen some weird things on Instagram and Facebook. Now is not the time for unnecessary risks while you're at home. You don't wanna take up a hospital bed that is needed by someone else. I know it seems funny, but I'm serious. Don't do weird things. I've seen people doing handstands on their kitchen counters. No. Just stay safe, be smart, and be respectful of everyone else's needs. So, if you're not balancing, you're lifting one leg or the other, both legs, if you can balance in the middle of the room without hurting yourself or you have a wall there. Otherwise, there's formidable pose. So, formidable pose is like a little mini down dog push up with the elbows bent, or like dolphin, but you lift the elbows up off the floor into chaturanga. So, I'll show it. Starts in a little mini downward facing dog. Lift your right leg. As you come forward, elbows come over the wrist, then they start to bend, bring the chest forward, almost like you're gonna go into a tripod. Then press back, a little push up, set the foot down, lift your left leg up. Come forward, bend the elbows, squeeze them in towards each other like you were gonna set yourself down on your elbows, but then press back up. Try not to come down below the elbows. Then maybe, as the right leg comes up, you shift forward. Maybe if you squeeze, both legs can lift up, squeeze the elbows in, hold yourself up, use your fingertips, keep the elbows in, and then bring it all the way down and rest in your child's pose. Or you did dolphin, or you're just in child's pose. Perfect. Whatever you chose, as long as you didn't risk yourself, I think that's great. Take a couple breaths of rest again. Maybe roll your forehead over the mat if you're in child's pose and give yourself a couple of breaths. All right, so come 
back up for your child's pose. And just extend your legs out in front of you, sitting back. If you need to sit up on a blanket, you're gonna do a couple forward folds. Feel free to sit back. You have a surprise guest. Hi, baby. Come on, he's getting a little bored. Oh, good thing he didn't come while I was balancing. This is Prescott, for those of you who haven't met him, for those of you who have, he misses you all very dearly. Right here. All right, so we're gonna start in Janu Shishasana. Ooh, good stretch, look at the downward facing dog. Extend your right leg, bring your left foot in. Turn towards your fuzzy puppy or your straight leg. <laughs> he knows where I'm going. Lift up, maybe your hands stay behind you, maybe you start to lean forward. Maybe you can walk your hands forward and snuggle your little puppy. Or you just fold into a gentle fold towards your straight leg. Hi, baby. <laughs> Thank you. I know, we're going outside so that's his sneeze. That means he's not barking yet when he wants to go outside. Come back up. Open your legs a little bit for a seated side bend. Bring your right hand to the inside of the leg. Reach your left arm up. And side bend up and over the leg. You can bring your hand down to the foot, especially if you're not wearing a strangely tight romper. <laughs> I don't want to rip it. I love this thing. But you don't really need to come low. Just twist open and really get a nice stretch up out of the left side of your waist. And then bring yourself up and switch your legs. Extending your left leg, bring your right foot in. Turn towards the sleepy puppy. And then fold down towards that left leg. Again, depends on where you are in your forward fold. Maybe your hands stay behind you so you can sit up nice and tall, lengthen out, and just lean into the resistance of the stretch of the leg. Keep in mind, we're not stretching to pull the muscles longer. We're just trying to relax the muscles. The feeling of stretch helps us relax. So if you lean into it and just allow the muscle to soften as you go a little deeper, maybe you don't go deeper, but eventually it'll release its grip enough to let you come down. And breathe deeply into your back. Then widen your legs out to the side. Bring your left hand to the inside of the leg. Reach your right arm up and over. And take your side bend. <laughs> Lifting up out of the right side of your waist. get down close to the floor. Some of you might be high. Some of you may keep your hands behind you. Again, just to send the upper body forward a little bit. And carefully sit back up. Release the legs. As you come down, <laughs> Grab a hold of whatever strap you might have to come down onto the floor. Go. <laughs> Adjust for whatever pets or toddlers might be around. Plant your feet on the ground, knees to the sky. 
Lift your right leg up. Hook the strap around your right foot. Give yourself enough slack to let your shoulders rest. And then just draw the leg back through center line. Again, just until you feel a little bit of resistance or stretch. Your left leg can extend, but I don't want you to arch your lower back up. So you can keep your left foot bent. Maybe that lets you get a little bit more through the leg. Because I want this to be a release for the hip and your low back as well, not just the hamstrings. So think about the tension pressing down through your right low back, coming up around the hip, releasing down the leg. This single leg series with strap is a great thing to do at home by yourself, just on its own. It's a really great relief for hips, legs, and low back. It's the whole lower half of the body pretty much. Then position two, let the leg float out to the side. You can catch the leg in your right hand with the elbow on the ground like a kickstand. You can let the leg hang if that's okay using the strap. If you come low, but just remember, you're not trying to get the leg down and away from you. You're trying to bring it more towards the shoulder, so higher and higher up is better than lower and further away. So get that diagonal angle to the right. If you come close, you can always grab the heel, turn the toes to the ground, until eventually you might touch the toes to the floor. Carefully bring it back up. And then a little bit to the left. Just let it twist. Right hand to the hip, encourage it down. You're not falling off to your side completely yet, unless your puppy is pushing you off to your side. And back towards the shoulder, more than just down towards the floor. So keep it up as high as you need to, to aim it to the upper left, back behind you. Let this outer line of the leg release. And then maybe, last couple breaths, let it come all the way down, roll onto your hip, take a full twist, reach that right arm out. Then draw the leg back up, release the strap. Cross your right ankle over left thigh for the last position with this leg. And just hug your left leg in, give it a couple breaths in your figure four on your back. Maybe rock a little side to side. And then release, plant your right foot on the ground, hook a strap around your left foot, and bring it to center. Again, you can straighten your right leg or keep it bent. Just draw the leg in line, keep that left hip and low back on the floor, and think about that curve around the hip to release the back of the leg. Again, more about softening than about pulling further. Position two, let the leg go out to the left. Again, back towards the shoulder more than just to the floor. Left elbow can stay on the ground, hand can hold the leg like a kickstand. You can put a prop under your left hip if you need to. The closer it comes to the floor, the more you spin the heel to the sky, toes to the ground. So thankful that I got Prescott a few months ago before all this madness. A bit different quarantine without this guy. And carefully bring it back up. Start to let the leg go off to the right. You can hook your thumb into the hip crease to keep it down. Again, trying to get it back just as much as out to the side. That stretch of the outer leg. After a few 
few breaths, maybe full twist, letting the leg come all the way down, reach your left arm out. Strap, cross your left ankle over the right thigh for that figure four. Gently hug the right knee in. Leave your left knee alone. Don't try to push it away. Feels better for the hip, almost, if you push the knee away, but it is not good for your knee. So just focus on drawing the right leg in. Rock a little side to side. And coming down into full shavasana. Arms and legs a little out to the side. You can support yourself with a blanket over you if you'd like. Make sure you're warm enough. And just allow yourself to rest. Let the arms and legs be heavy. Relax your jaw. Soften your eyes closed. Give yourself a little bit of time to really rest. Just allow your mind to sink back, soften back behind the eyelids. And just really give yourself these moments to connect to the idea of rest and to remind your body what it feels like to really rest. It's a good reminder because you always have this for you. You don't have to do a full yoga practice. You don't have to practice for years or do tons of meditation or anything like that or have fancy massage toys or tools. You can always just rest and allow yourself to drop back into this bit of space that you have inside. Yourself a breath. Stay in Shavasana as long as you like. Just stay and rest. Otherwise, you can come back up to seated carefully through your side, keeping your eyes closed if you'd like, and using your arms to gently press up to an easy seat. through Facebook and Instagram. We're so lucky at this time that we have all these amazing software and apps and social media so that we can reach out to each other. Continue to do so. Don't isolate. It's not the same thing as self-quarantine. And take care. Hope to see you soon. I love you all.